if you try to test your, your project at this point, it doesn't quite work just yet. If you're doing it in Chrome, it might give you a scary looking error. If you do it in Firefox, it doesn't look like an error, but then it looks like it takes you back to welcome. It's not working yet because we have not programmed that join button yet. Although it sort of looks like it wants to work, it doesn't work. And even you saw here, I'm going to type the password AAA, and then I'm going to confirm it as BBB, and I click join, it won't give me any error yet. This error is something else in that it doesn't understand what are you trying to log into. That's normal. Let's fix one little thing, then we'll keep going with our code. Um, looking at my notes here, I have a little bit of extra code that we might not need. Uh, when we created the... Uh, when we created PG sign up, we had H2 and then a paragraph and then the form. Uh, looking at a, an HTML validator, it doesn't look like we actually need this paragraph. A form element seems to work best when it is not in a paragraph. Our code seemed to work fine, but if we run it through a validator, it seems to cause an issue. So I think also looking at my notes, I don't have that there. So I think just to head off any issues, let's delete. The pair, the p tags that we've got wrapping around the form, we don't need those paragraphs. So just delete p, close p, delete them both. Want to remember to delete both of them, not just one or the other. Just delete both of those p's. It should still work exactly the same, but it is a little more correct to not have it. Okay, what I want to do next here is. Um, we get a little bit of feedback um, when we try to submit the form. There's a little bit of feedback about that doesn't look like an email. Or uh, it says, please fill in these fields. We have a little bit of built-in feedback. I want to create my own little feedback pop-ups. We will create it for this and other input fields. For example, I wanted to say passwords don't match. There's no built-in system here that will confirm that the passwords match, so we'll create one. What we will also do is, let's say a person is trying to create an account, but there is already that account. They're trying to create an account again, we can tell them account already exists. And then lastly, when they set it all up completely perfectly, then we'll say, okay, great, sign in. So we'll do a couple of feedback messages. The way this will work, is after the form. That's right, a note here. We're still inside the article, but now we're after the form. And we're saying jQuery mobile based um, feedback pop ups. These are going to relate to this form in this screen. So they should be in the section or in the article. These pop-ups relate to this item here, so they're in that article. So we're going to create these divs, div, div. Open close div div. Uh, these are divisions. We saw this briefly when we first looked at some of the jQuery mobile widgets. This is a generic element. It's going to hold content. It's going to say passwords don't match. So the message passwords don't match are inside of this div. This div, then, we can attach various attributes to make it behave a certain way and to pop up at a certain time. So attribute, the first attribute here, div data role pop-up. This is different than the other dialog box that we created before. That one was a whole section, a whole big modal dialog box that appeared on screen for the options screen, remember? This one's going to be a much simpler little pop-up that appears like one line big. So we've got data roll of pop-up. We're going to add a um, class to this of UI-content. 
Well, that's familiar. We've seen class UI content in the article. And basically that is so that the so that the pop-up is not transparent. If we didn't add that class, the text would be sort of floating there without any background. UI content just creates a simple background based on the theme, the color scheme. We need a unique identifier so that we know when to display it at a certain point. We'll call this ID pop. It's going to be a pop-up. It's going to be an error pop-up in the sign up screen mismatch. That's how you spell mismatch, right? Or one S. Mismatch. So the prefix is that this is a pop-up. It's an error pop-up. It's in our sign up screen, and specifically the error is password mismatch. Next line, here's where we're going to do an error pop up of account already exists. Same idea, we give it a div, we create a div, we type what text will appear on screen. Account already exists. It needs a data role, same as before, of pop up. It needs a class, same as before, of UI content. And then it needs a unique identifier based on what I already wrote up here. It's going to be pop error sign up exists, or any unique name we want to give it. Pop error sign up exists. So these are two pop ups, simple pop ups compared to the dialog box. They both got a class for the background color, they have unique identifiers. They're both pop-ups, they're both errors, they're both in the sign-up screen. But this one's about mismatching passwords, and that one's about existing accounts. That's the text that appears, and they both end slash div. Okay, next line, another pop-up. Let me back up a little bit here and say basic jQuery mobile-based feedback pop-ups, because this next one is slightly more complex. jQuery mobile-based feedback pop-up it's going to be uh, similar to what we've written here but it'll be a little more complex in that uh, you've seen this on plenty of uh, websites you create an account and then a little pop-up says, OK, great, you've signed up. Uh, click here to actually sign in. This needs a div as well. This time I'm going to break the div into multiple lines. I had this div all in one line because it was just one simple phrase that was being said to the user. I have it all just for efficiency, all on one line. This one's going to be a little more complex. It'll say a little bit more. So just for readability, I'm putting it in separate lines. But it still needs a data role, a pop-up. This time, data dialog of true. 
Here's a new one. Data dismissible. False. I'll explain in a moment. And then a unique ID. Pop success sign up. So the prefixes on these had error because they were about errors. This one's got pop, this is a pop up, but a success. And it's part of the sign up screen. These other pop-ups can be closed by simply clicking away from them. They appear on screen and you can click on them or click outside of them to close them. This one is set to dis dismissible false. It cannot be closed unless you actually close on the, on the little dialog box. The point of that is sometimes people you know, we're in such a hurry, we see things pop up, we don't think we just close it, and what did I just close? So this one can only be closed if the person pays attention and actually clicks to close it. The ones above could be closed by clicking elsewhere without paying attention. This one's more important, so it's not going to be easily dismissible unless it's obvious. This one uh, can be set up as a, as a very simple dialog box with a header. Data roll header. H1. We're going to give them a welcome message that once they've created the account, well, welcome to the app. Let's have you sign in. After the header, we've got an article, as we've used several times before. Here's where we got the role of main and the class of UI content. Here's where it's the not transparent background. A paragraph in the article. Thank you. Ready to go. Break a tag to log in. So the idea is the person types their email, they confirm their password, they click s sign up, or, or they click join. That's what the button's called. They click the join button. Behind the scenes, it'll check. Does the person exist already? It does, so it'll pop up. That pop up up there, account already exists. If the passwords do not match, it'll pop up. Passwords don't match. If the passwords do match, if the account doesn't exist, they're brand new, then it'll get a pop up that says, welcome. Thank you for signing up. We're ready to go. Then, then there will be a button to go to the login screen. href pound PG login. Take us to the login screen. This should be a button, data roll button. And we will add an icon, uh, an animation, data transition, flip. So this slight, slightly more complex jQuery mobile based feedback pop-up. It has elements of a full page in that it has a data dialog. It has elements also like a header and an article like a full page. Those are for design. It behaves more like a pop-up with a data roll pop-up. It has a unique identifier, that ID, so that via JavaScript we can call it. We can activate it at the right time with some uh, interactivity.
we won't be able to test these just yet. Uh, save it and run it and check your F12 console to see if there's any errors, but we shouldn't really be able to quite see these pop-ups yet. Uh, I'm going to run it in Chrome. I'm going to go to sign up. Again, if I try to join without typing anything, it should give me some error messages. If I fill these in as email addresses, I'm going to put the password AAA and BBB. It's not, it's not going to detect that yet. If I click Join, it'll give me an error. That's normal. The join is not working yet. If I clear, clear is going to work. If I do put in passwords that match, AAA, AAA, it still will give me an error because that's still not fully set up. That's normal. And if I try to set, the, if I try to do this in uh, Firefox, it'll behave a little bit different, but it's still not working yet. If I sign up, join, I get the message. A at a.com, password AAA, password AAA, join. I didn't get an on-screen error. I got something happening in the console. That's normal. I expect it. My pop-ups won't happen yet because those will happen via JavaScript. Here's where I'm at so far. So the um, the sign up screen visually is complete. Technically, it's not in terms of the buttons actually working. We're going to then set up our login screen to be visually complete, but it won't be technically complete yet in one moment but let me pause here does that does that work anyone having any trouble getting any weird error messages
All right, so for um, then the login screen, it's going to be similar in terms of we're going to need a form for the person to type in their email and password. And we're going to have some pop-ups that might appear about wrong password and such. Uh, so let's jump over to our PG login screen. And we're going to do something very similar to what we did for PG sign up. Uh, so I scroll down just a little bit, line 77 or so. Here's where I've got PG login. Here's where I had the button to go home. Got that paragraph. Uh, you can either ignore it or delete it. Um, you know, as I said, you can leave that there as a comment if you ever want it back. You honestly don't really need that at all, so I'm just going to delete that. We want that to happen via JavaScript. Uh, we know that if we, we can go from this screen to that screen with that simple A tag, but it's not going to work like that at all. We want it to work with a real JavaScript, real interactivity. So I'm just going to remove the paragraph and the go to home. And we're going to create a, uh, a form very similar to the other, um, the other section. So form, open close form, ID, form login. In this case, we're going to ask for the person's email and the person's password. We're going to have a clear and go button. Well, same as before. This is going to be a label with an input field. Label with input field. An input field of type clear and input field of type submit. So this label, you wrap label around email, you wrap label around password, input type reset value clear, Input type submit value go. <clears throat> Input tag of type submit value of go. There's the clear button, there's the go button. We're going to ask for the email, we're going to ask for the password. We have a label. How does the, how does the next piece of code look like after label? We're already in the form, the whole thing's a form. Input, yes, input. Anything else? Type email, perfect. We are expecting an email to be typed into this input field. Um, we um, want, as a little bit of a help, a placeholder to guide people what they should type into that box. Name, good. What's the name? Name is based on label. We haven't added it for label, so let's back up to label, then we'll add name. For this label is going to be used for this input, which has the same name as what we're going to set up here. And um, just the way I'm doing it here, this is going to be attached to an input field. This is the email label as part of the login form. So now I know what to put the name, and now I know what to put as the ID for this input. You will see here for password, okay, password for in password login with an input of type password. No placeholder, name, and ID. 
So the name of the this first input field and then the ID of that first input field is the same um, name attribute. It should be required that a person fills in the email and the password. So uh, I'm putting it after type required. That one's odd. It, it doesn't quite need something equals something, although you could do required equals required. Just doing the attribute required on its own will activate the feature of this is required. <coughs> so then for the password, for in password login next to it is an input of type password which is required no placeholder necessary name is the same as the for attribute and id is the same this line, this, long is, this line is really long. I can't show the beginning and end of it very easily. But you should get the idea that it's very consistent. They're both inputs. They have some form of type. They're both set to require. They both have name. They both have ID. And again, I'm, I'm, I'm inventing this, this, this name and ID. We can invent these. We make them up however we want. And I'm naming them in this way makes sense to me, might not make sense to you, might be too wordy. That's fine. La name those things however you want, but you'll need to keep track of them. But for me, it makes sense that this is part of an input field. It's a password, part of the login form. The other one was input password sign up. It was part of an input field regarding passwords in the sign up form. If I uh, save it and run it just to see what it looks like so far, and I go over to the login screen, we have the email, we have the password. That go button does not work yet, but if you if you try to go, it might give you the message. Well, that needs an email. That needs a password. You can clear it. Clear should work. A at a dot com password bbb. Click go. It may either seem to take you back to the welcome screen with an error, that's normal. It may give you an error message, that's normal. Again, this is not fully programmed to actually read the password, check the database, and all of that. So any errors like that are going to be normal so far. But it should look something like that. There it is so far. This will benefit from also a couple of pop-ups that could say wrong password or account doesn't exist. So now here when a person is trying to log in, a pos two possible errors that could happen are that they typed a password wrong. According to our database, that password is incorrect, so we'll need a pop-up that says that. Or what could happen is a person's trying to sign up, they've never created an account, so give them the pop up that says account doesn't exist. Same as before, that in this same article, after the form, we will create a couple of divs. 
with the messages we want, wrong password, or account doesn't exist, same as the pop-ups we created before, these need data rules, this needs a class, this needs an ID. What was our data role for pop-ups? Exactly. Super easy. Pop-up. One word, no space, no caps. They need the class so that they're not transparent. And then their unique IDs. Pop, error, log in. Wrong password. And then another one here pop. Error log in not exists. So two pop-ups, they're in divs, they've got their data role pop-up, not transparent background, unique identifiers so that we can launch them, so that we can make them appear when necessary via JavaScript. Really long name, yes, that could be pared down super, super simple if you want. But the problem is, I often see tutorials online about JavaScript that they do a really bad job of explaining what they're doing, especially with the names of variables and objects and functions and things, because people use really, really esoteric names for their things. They name something CF. What does that mean? If I'm looking at your hundreds of lines of code, what does CF mean? It was some sort of function to uh, compute. I don't know. Here, this is the opposite. It's very verbose. It's very wordy. It's a very long word. Pop, error, login, wrong password. And yes, that must be spelled correctly whenever you use it. But the reason I'm doing it really wordy is that hopefully at a glance, when you look at it, it makes sense what's this supposed to be. It's regarding a pop-up, regarding an error pop-up, regarding the login screen, and specifically the wrong password. So when you do your own version of the app and such, if you'd like to change these sorts of things, that's fine. Whatever makes sense to you, shorthands and all of that, as long as it works. Uh, it should, unless I wrote it wrong. So up here I've got label, opening label, closing label, then no, input. What I, what I mean, the question is that under the upper categories of email login, uh, we're using label, and then when we're using clear, we have input. Oh, okay. I see here. So um, this one of label and then input, and this one only input, the difference here is if you only display input type email, it'll just be a box. I don't know what I'm supposed to type into the box. So we include a label that tells people, you should type an email into that box. This input by itself would again be some sort of box. I don't know what to type into it. We include a label that says type a password here. We don't need label over here because these buttons automatically have a value that tells you what you should do with them. This value says clear, it's a button, it clears. This one says go, it goes. It would not be wrong to also type a label, but it would be overkill, because you'd be telling the same thing twice. OK, so there's no way at the moment to test that those little pop-ups work, because if I try to go with a wrong password or with uh, an account that already exists, that has not been programmed yet. So you'll either get just this basic message, or it'll go back to welcome, or you might get a big old scary message in the, in the F12. That's fine. It's not fully programmed yet. That's what we've got so far.
Okay, um... What's coming up here is the complexity of going to sign up. It will take the it will take the pass it will take the email, confirm the password is the same, store it in the database, and, and then create an account. And then once we've got an account, okay, then we can log in and log in with our credentials. It'll then check does the password match and such. All of that's going to be JavaScript. All of that's going to be the interactivity. So uh, I, I want to I want to do one more pause here a little bit earlier. I want to confirm that it works like this for everyone at this point because what follows next will be JavaScript and that'll be much more complex. We'll take our first break right now. Seven our next break right now, 7:25. We'll be back at 7:35. Um, we'll confirm this all works and then when we come back we'll do some hardcore JavaScript.